The Nobel Prizes are often considered the highest scientific honor in the world and despite many controversies, the coveted prize is the dream for researchers across the globe. This year, the prizes for scientific fields range from sequencing of the DNA of Neanderthals to unraveling the spooky quantum properties of subatomic particles to click chemistry which is paving the way for new cancer therapies. In this video, I explain the science behind the works of the three science Nobel Prizes, why they are considered to be breakthroughs and what applications they may have in the future. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. This year's Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine went to Swante Pebo, who accomplished something that was seemingly impossible sequencing the genome of the Neanderthal, an extinct relative of present-day humans. This was challenging because with time, DNA becomes chemically modified and degrades into short fragments. After thousands of years, only trace amounts of DNA are left. And moreover, whatever remains is massively contaminated with DNA from bacteria and modern humans. Pebo started developing methods to study DNA from Neanderthals as a postdoctoral student, and his endeavor lasted several decades. He decided to analyze DNA from Neanderthal mitochondria, which are organelles in cells that contain their own DNA. The mitochondrial genome is small and contains only a fraction of the genetic information in the cell, but it is present in thousands of copies, increasing the chances of success. With his methods, Pebo managed to sequence a region of mitochondrial DNA from a 40,000-year-old piece of bone. Refining his methods, Pebo was able to publish the Neanderthal genome for the first time in 2010. Now, what did the genomes reveal? First, that the common ancestor of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens lived around 800,000 years ago. Sequences from different parts of the world also showed that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens interbred during a millennia of coexistence. Which is why, in modern-day humans with European or Asian descent, approximately 1-4% to of the genome originates from the Neanderthal. His research also showed that Denisovans, another ancient human relative, and Homo sapiens mated with each other which is why in parts of Southeast Asia, individuals carry up to 6% Denisovan DNA. More recently, Pebo's research revealed that a fragment of gene inherited from Neanderthals makes humans more susceptible to COVID. Coming to the Nobel Prize in Physics, this was awarded to Elaine Aspect, John Clauser and Anton Zielinger, who conducted pioneering experiments with entangled quantum states where two particles behave as a unit even when they are separated or have never interacted previously. With their results, they have paved the way for new technology based on quantum information. Quantum properties of a particle can often be hard to wrap one's head around simply because particles at the subatomic level do not behave in the same way as we see in our everyday objects. Objects around us follow laws of classical mechanics and are easy to predict with mathematical equations. Subatomic particles, however, are described with probabilities. So the best we can do is to understand the probability of a particle being at a given point. Quantum particles also exist in different energetic states. These states can be unpredictable, but many applications rest upon how quantum mechanics allow two or more particles to exist in a shared state, regardless of how far apart they are. This is called entanglement and has been one of the most debated elements of quantum mechanics ever since the theory was first formulated. Albert Einstein talked about spooky action at a distance and Erwin Schrodinger said it was quantum mechanics most important trait. Now, to understand entanglement, let's say that there are two balls in a box, one white and one black. By looking at the box, there is no way of telling which ball is of what color. But if one exits the box, you can tell the color of the other. That is, if the ball that exited the box was black, the other must be white. However, quantum mechanics says that the balls were grey until someone actually looked at them. When one 
randomly turned white and the other turned black. Now, interesting things happen if the particles in an entangled pair travel in opposite directions and one of them meets a third particle in such a manner that they become entangled. Now, particle B and C are entangled, but C is now also linked to A without ever having interacted with it. This way of transferring an unknown quantum state from one particle to another is called quantum teleportation. This type of experiment was first conducted in 1997 by Zilinga and his colleagues. The scientists developed new methods to study quantum particles, with their experiments furthering our understanding of how such particles behave. These insights can pave the way for faster, more secure computing in the future. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to Barry Sharpless, Morton Meldahl and Caroline Bertozzi for laying the foundations of click chemistry and using it to map cells. These advances are now contributing to more targeted cancer treatments, among many other applications. To create complex molecules, researchers usually take inspiration from nature and try to replicate the natural processes in the lab. However, complex molecules must be built in many steps, with each step creating unwanted byproducts. These have to be removed before the process can continue, and for many molecules, the loss of material is huge. This can be both time-consuming and expensive. Barry Sharpless, who is now being awarded his second Nobel Prize in Chemistry, coined the concept of click chemistry where molecular building blocks snap together quickly and efficiently. Around 2002, Morton Meldal and Sharpless independently found that copper ions can be used with azides and alkynes easily to link different molecules. The method can be used to make new molecules without having to replicate natural processes in the lab. In 2004, Bertozzi showed that copper-free click reaction called strain-promoted alkyne azide cycloaddition can be used to track biomolecules known as glycans that are known to protect tumor cells from our immune system. To block this protective mechanism, Bertozzi and her colleagues have created a new type of biological pharmaceutical product. They have joined a glycan-specific antibody to enzymes that break down the glycans on the surface of the tumor cells. This pharmaceutical is now being tested in clinical trials on people with advanced cancer. Many researchers have also started to develop clickable antibodies that target a range of tumors. This is Mohan Abbasu, Assistant Editor at The Print. If you like our videos, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.